I've really enjoyed planning this table in pink, and wait till you see what I've come up with. I'll tell you one thing, using a solid color made this very easy. I've begun the table by laying a silk overlay on top of a nice piece of Irish linen. I've got about five or six of these beautiful white tablecloths, and I use them on their own, or in this case, I put it on the table first, and then put a gorgeous piece of Dupioni silk. This is a, a light shade of pink, and it's got a nice shimmer and sheen to it. Our centerpiece is still looking magnificent, and now, in the center of the table, you'll see it's setting the stage for an extremely attractive lunch. Finally, a chance to sit down on the job. Actually, not the case. We're going right to napkin folds. I begin with a simple pink French linen napkin, and I simply bring together the point, so I formed a triangle here. Normally on this type of a napkin you'd bring the folds up. Instead I'll bring them down so it's creating a very long napkin fold. You might need some workspace in order to pull this off correctly. Now same thing again, fold the right side in and the same thing with the other side. Now you've got a very long point here. Bring your, you can hold your hand in the center here. Bring the point up right until it meets this point. Next Turn it over, and now comes the accoutrements that always make a luncheon or dinner party so memorable. I've selected this really lovely, kind of shimmery pink ribbon, and also I found some tassels. I run the ribbon through the loop of the tassel, and I put it up right in about the center, and now I tie it around my neck. No, actually, I simply do a quick tie, and now the tassel is in the center of the ribbon. And don't tie it too tight. You want a nice kind of bunch of the ribbon there. Okay, Placing the tassel in the center of the ribbon, I've got the two edges stretching out horizontally. I now flip the napkin over. I know that that tassel is centered in a very simple knot. And not too tight. You don't want it too tight, just loose enough to tie this up. I flip it over and you've got this attractive loop in the center and you pull down our two little ears. I'll place these over the luncheon plates. I wish you had been there when I found this china. I was like a kid in a candy store and I've put together two very different patterns. This is a scalloped edge Limoges china from France and it has a very intricate ribbon embossing on the side and also some lovely gold detailing. I'm combining them with this pink patterned bell china, circa about 1820, so this is a very old china service. I almost had to wrench it out of the woman's arms in the store. Now look carefully at the different pieces to this china. This is a very lovely, it's very almost empire style, a Romanesque teacup and saucer, and it's for me with Mr. Big Fingers, it's also uh, fully usable, which is great. And also, in the same pattern as the cup and saucer and the smaller plates, here's a small little fruit bowl, again with that gorgeous detailing, and of course in the pink color. This service must have been either footed dinner plates or these were simple presentation plates. Perhaps in the 1800s they would have served vegetables on these plates or mutton or something exotic. In looking for our china, I also found attractive accessory pieces which although not in the same pattern still match the theme. This is a lovely covered soup or stew pot. This is wonderful. I also found this. Here is a footed candy plate and I'll use this to serve some nice bruschetta with my luncheon. The flatware for my intimate luncheon is a fine silver plate service which I began collecting a few years ago. I love this cutlery because of its weight, but more importantly, I love the detailing on the back. Each of the pieces has fine filigree and embossing. Now if we could rewind to about a hundred years ago and if we were somewhere special like a wonderful restaurant in France, the table would be set with the cutlery in our mind upside down. That was a sure sign when you entered a restaurant that the cutlery was perfectly clean and ready for your enjoyment. Nowadays we usually place our flatware directly as you'll see I've done on this table. 
I found these tablespoons a couple of years ago, and unfortunately, they're not of the same pattern, but they look exactly the same, with the exception that they're not embossed on the back. But they still work well for this table. The final elements are a dessert fork and also a teaspoon, so the guests can enjoy their coffee or tea, whichever I decide to serve this afternoon. I'm going to serve a light Chardonnay with our lunch, so I selected these simple glasses with a very large gold rim on them. The gold border will match the china. I've placed a napkin at each place setting and also a compact rose arrangement. Two of the arrangements are on the table and the additional ones are behind me on the side rail. But look at this wonderful treasure, the final touch. Small Royal Crown Derby flowers. I guess these must have been used to make a larger china arrangement, but these wonderful tiny flowers are a lovely and whimsical touch. They're so attractive and I hope my guests enjoy them as I place them just all over, a little haphazard around the table. And with the placement of the last china flower, I'm sure you'll agree, this table is perfection in pink. <laughs>